This is the first time I've put pants on in <laughs> four weeks. I got a cold brew. You got a Moscow mule. That explains our relationship very well. <laughs> la, 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 What is going on, everybody? Thank you for being here today. I'm sure you all know we're under a little bit of a lockdown, so what better video topic than to just open it up? I asked you guys on Instagram, which be sure to follow me if you not you are not already, to ask Megan and I some relationship questions. I know you guys want to see Caraman on the actual camera. Let her have a few more drinks and she'll be good to go. So, like I mentioned, all of these questions are from Instagram. And I think the thing to do is just, rather than put it towards the end, just ask, or just answer the one question that almost everyone had, the, the big, the elephant in the room. From B Entley, thank you for your question. When are you and Megan getting married? I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would have been an epic troll. So, um, it's kind of an awkward question, honestly, because we've been dating for a while and you still haven't proposed. I know. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the right time. <laughs> okay. I don't want to say that I'm hurt by it, but I just felt like I've proved myself. I moved my life across the country from the greatest city in the entire world. I left Austin, Texas to come to North Carolina, which is beautiful. And she hasn't gotten on one knee yet. So <laughs> what are you waiting on? I don't know. Okay. So that's kind of where it lays today. Um, <laughs> balls in my court. Balls in her court. Next question. Question from Jace Power. If you could change one trait of your partner, what would it be and what wouldn't you change? <laughs> so right now, for me, it's how regimented he is. He's tracking everything. He's making me do that too. <laughs> I mean, had to get 10,000 10, steps in, have to. Yep water intake we both have specific goals he holds me accountable but it's getting a little bit so this is crazy. what you <laughs> this is what you would change then just for right now just for right, just now. For right now i i normally do like that but i think just it's a lot because yeah. we're in this apart this apartment is tiny this is like what a thousand square feet and we're here with a dog all day all night yeah. um anyone that's ever lived with me should get some kind of award like my best friend Josh somehow did it for four years and Megan are really the only people that have lived with me for an extended amount of time. You guys see how annoying I am online, but to live with me is a whole nother world. Um, I am so militant in everything that I do. Everything is regimented, everything's scheduled. I annoy myself, so I can't even imagine a third party. So hats off to Megan. Please like the video for Megan. She has to deal with this day in and day out. And we appreciate you, cameraman. Mm -hmm. One trait I would change about Megan is how hard she is on herself. She is like, she picks herself apart. And I think maybe it's a female thing in general, um, but it drives me nuts. Because to <laughs> me, she's perfect in every way and all, and you know, everything about her. And when she looks at herself or when there's a certain things, she just doesn't give herself enough credit for, I feel like. So I wish that she could see herself how I see her. That's what I would change about her. What wouldn't I change about Megan? Her sexy Southern accent. That's, <laughs> That's not going anywhere. Good. What two things would you do if you woke up to find yourself completely invisible? So that means we would not catch sickness, right? I would say no. I mean, yeah. Right now? Yeah, so, so COVID not included. I'd probably like hop on a boat and go somewhere really tropical. But why would you have to be invisible to do that? <laughs> I don't have to pay for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you would just sneak on the yacht. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, if I was invisible, hmm, that's a good question. If it was right now, if I was invisible, the number one thing I would do is I would get to the gym and I would just camp, <laughs> camp out. I would just hang out in the gym. Turn the lights on. <laughs> yeah, I would just like, whatever. I would just post up at a gym. I'm going crazy, guys. If I could be one place, it'd be a gym. Um, <laughs> I would say answer. gym, boat. Question from Audi Outs. What was your first date? It's a good top golf, right? Yeah, you, I, could classify, well, you could I, classify that, or you could classify our first day at Coffee Emporium. Okay, yeah, so kind of the same weekend. And walking, yeah. So, so, so first dates are like one-on-one. -on -one, yeah, right? I would say so. So if you guys watched the first Q&A video we did together, which I'll link down below, the first time me and Megan, like we knew each other for a long time, I tried to get with her for a very long time, but she kept, you know, saying no. 
Um, ultimately what happened was I was finally leaving Ohio and Josh surprised me and she came to my going away party at Top Golf. That would be like the first time we officially hung out. That's kind of how it all got started. And then the next morning, we walked to my favorite coffee shop in Cincinnati, Ohio, Coffee Emporium. Then we went out to brunch and we spent the weekend together. It's pretty awesome and the rest is history. So that was our first date. What made you fall for one another? Wow, uh, Megan, M-E-A-G-A-N underscore M-A-R something. Uh, kind of hitting you with the romance. Mm -hmm. How did I sweep you off your feet? Wow, you're very relentless. <laughs> You knew what you wanted. Yeah. But also then I started to get to know, obviously, your personality. The more that we talked, you're really witty. And started to watch you on YouTube? Yeah, I started watching you on YouTube, but it was more so our one-on-one -on -one conversations and just getting to know you as a person and your mm -hmm. heart. Um, that was fine. Okay. I would say initially it was that she was brilliant. Um, she was very, very intelligent. And at this time, I had never even seen her in person. And then when I finally saw her for the first time, it was like a few months after, she she was like this. So I was like, wait, she's brilliant. And she was like that, I'm gonna marry her. I remember I, I called Josh and I was like, hey, I'm gonna marry this girl. And um, hopefully that's true if you uh, get your act together. <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest lesson you each learn through long distance dating or dating in general from, I'm gonna butcher that, but thank you for your question. <laughs> Biggest lesson you learned through long distance? That it's worth it yeah. if it's the right person. Um, communication is crucial. Yep. Um, I feel like we learned a lot about ourselves. You have to find things that make you happy and, and don't be dependent on someone for that. Yeah, it's for sure. It's good to have your own things. Yeah, it was, it was very challenging, but I think in the long run, I'm, I'm happy that we went through it because it really made you appreciate the the time that we did get together. Mm -hmm. And now, even when she's driving me crazy. Oh, hell no. Even when, you know, we're here together all the time, you always think about, like we, we were just talking about this, what if COVID happened when we were long distance and we didn't get to see each other for months and months and months? Yeah, and I feel for all of you who are dealing with that. I can't even imagine, yeah. that would have sucked. Cause that's the one thing we looked forward to every month. Like it sucked. One of the worst feelings in the world is dating long distance. And then that Sunday morning when we wake up super early and I dropped her off at the airport, that was terrible, I hated that. So those parts were very difficult, but she kind of hit the nail on the head um, in terms of my thoughts as well. You learn to prioritize what's actually important. Oh, oh she's off to the next question. She's like, I'm done talking about us. Okay, I get it, I get it. Let's move on. Let's move on. Um, from Steven VQZ Dream Car Goals. Ironically, it's very similar. Mm -hmm. Dream car? I'll take a white Range Rover mm -hmm. with camel seats. Okay. I will take a blacked out Range Rover. Black everything. Black rims, black paint, black seats, mobbed out. Um, <laughs> so when I get my Range Rover, she'll be jealous for a little bit. Ultimately, in like 30 to 40 years after we have kids and she gets rid of the minivan, she'll get... <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a, a very oh, appropriate no. right now. What do you do when you were bored at home? Baldo 100. How many times in my life do you think I've ever been bored? Never. There's a quote by Betty Draper. I'm bored. Go bang your head against the wall. Mom. Only boring people are bored. Only boring people are bored. I've never heard that quote. I don't get <laughs> bored. I don't get tired and I don't get bored because I always have something going on. Even right now, when I have a lot of time on my hands with everything going on, I still feel like I don't have enough time because if it's not work related, I keep myself very busy, YouTube related. Um, I'm always trying to find something to occupy my time. We were talking about this this morning. I don't like to be alone in my own thoughts. So, no. no. So I'm always um, just on the go. I feel like I gravitate towards like arts and things like that. So I enjoy playing around in Photoshop or coloring and doing all the weird yeah. hippie things. Design? Uh, yeah. yeah. I just, I like the, the art side of things and the aesthetic side of things. So yes. I'll do my makeup for fun or yes. look on YouTube for tutorials. Yeah. Or watch Julia Hunter. Yeah. So she's binge watching these videos 
And she hasn't even seen all my videos. Yes, I no. <laughs> She hasn't. She hasn't. You made me hungry. <laughs> yeah, okay. So on that same note, fun date ideas for couples on a budget and being quarantined by Eric Moro Morosa. Fun date ideas. <clears throat> I've seen a few things. Um, obviously, we love to eat. Yep. So a lot of times we'll cook a meal. I like to have like a theme. So like an Italian night or a Mexican night. So that's fun for me to just kind of switch things up. And that's fun for me too, because Megan whips up that work in the kitchen <laughs> and I benefit from that. It's been awesome. Yeah. yeah, so that's one, but obviously I've seen a lot of people playing games together. So you can go on Amazon and order some two player games like cards or people doing puzzles is something that I've seen a lot of. Um, down here, there's a lot of people, like couples who are packing like a picnic and going down there. That would that's be a cool. good idea. Like an outdoor picnic. We'll probably do that. Yeah. If it's nice out, I think that's a good idea to get outside. Going for walks. We, walks. We yep. just went on one. We really enjoyed that. Yep. Um, at 6.30 a.m. every day, we have Pilates with each other. So he, uh, yep. he is obliged. <laughs> yes. And that, that's nice. Yeah. It's been good. It's just uh, mm -hmm. an, an extra way to spend time with one another and also good for your health as well. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's shows on Netflix or Hulu, so we're watching The Americans. All right. From MDC5628, how does having to travel across the state so much for work affect your relationship? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I would say it's very trying on our relationship because when I'm, it's been kind of nice in that regard for the mm -hmm. last few weeks. I haven't had to do that. Mm -hmm. um, because when you have to imagine, I drive two hours to work and from work, so that's four hours a day. So by the time I get home and unpack my stuff, there's not much quality of life there. Um, so it's kind of like I'm just waking up and I'm just there to survive and to bring money home. So it's very trying for us because we don't have an opportunity to be together. Um, so that part is very challenging. It's not ideal, but it's been challenging on both of us because when I come home, I'm not in the best of moods. <laughs> I'd say that's You it. try. He tries though. I can just tell that he's just exhausted. So a lot of times on Tuesdays and Thursdays or whenever he has to do that, I kind of just know that I need to kind of step away and just let him breathe when he gets home. And Jeez. I understand. It's just, you're right. I mean, it's just kind of like, some of those days you're just going through the motions and it's, you yeah. know, you get up, you go to work, repeat. Yep. So. And she makes me salmon bowls when I get home on those days because she you knows yeah. those are my favorite. So. <laughs> Cheer them up a little It's a team effort for sure because even when I get home, I go, I open my computer and I get straight back to work. So yeah. it's not great for our relationship um, to answer that in a nutshell. I think that's the final question that we had. I think I always screenshotted that many. Yeah. Do you have any more? Do you have any, anything you want to share with the people? Um. Any other insights? What's it like living with? No, we already kind of talked about that. Mm -hmm. we got? I think so. Short and sweet. Well, you know, we're, we'll, we're stuck in the house like you guys. We just want to share. So Wait, let's play that game where we close our eyes and then we do point it. If I can find it on TikTok. Okay. Megan's going to read the question. We're going to have our eyes closed as we point and we won't even know the answers until we watch the footage back. But obviously you guys can see it in real time. Okay. Who is most likely to go to the museum? Who is most likely to be the best at math? Who is most likely to give all their money to charity? Who is most likely to marry a celebrity? Who is most likely to hold their breath the longest <laughs> as is possible? What? <laughs> Who's most likely to hold their breath? Yeah, the longest as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Who is most likely to do weird things in public? <laughs> Who is most likely to have weird phobias? <laughs> Who is most likely to win a Nobel Prize? Who is most likely to get in a fight? Who is most likely to meet a ghost? Who is most likely to eat with mouth open? Mm -hmm. Who is most likely to worry about the small things? Who is most likely to do a bungee jump? Is that it? Yeah, that's enough. All right, so we don't know the answers, but they do. How do we do? <laughs> Greatness. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for taking some time to hang out with us. Please comment down below and have cameraman allow 
me to put her on camera more often. Wasn't this fun? It, it was. was it was, was great. fun. You enjoyed it. I did. We want more cameraman on the camera, not behind <laughs> the camera. We appreciate you. Thank you guys. As always, please stay safe out there. This thing, whatever's going on, it's not to be taken lightly. We are staying home. We are social distancing, except for each other, because obviously if one of us gets it, we're going to give it to each other. Um, but seriously, this is uh, its kind of scary, and we are taking it very, very seriously. So I hope you all are as well. But you all really could have been doing anything. Well, not anything, because most of you guys are like us, and you have a ban <laughs> from going anywhere else. But you could have been doing a lot of other things. But you chose to spend a few minutes with us. That's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. Please give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And we, we look, look forward to talking to you next time. Oh! <laughs>